Wow. Very interesting stuff coming out of the cryptocurrency world. Look at this right here from Gavin Wood, the creator of Polkadot. Events of today in crypto just go to show that genuine decentralization and well-designed security make a far more valuable proposition than some big transactions per second numbers coming from an exclusive and closed set of servers. If you can't run a full node yourself, then it's just another bank. He's throwing shots. He's throwing shots at Solana for going down. The blockchain came to a halt because there's way too much transactions per second. They literally topped out at 400,000 transactions per second. Even though they claim they can handle up to 600,000, they actually stopped the entire blockchain and then the centralized committee of validators actually restarted the whole entire blockchain. So it goes to show that centralization is an issue and high transactions per second and scalability are not the only thing. And Gavin Wood is taking shots at Solana. Wow, this is crazy. Cryptocurrency is ever more evolving. And in general, I am going to be breaking down every single layer one, which brings me to the topic of discussion in this video. Today, we are gonna be diving into the Polkadot ecosystem. I found three altcoins that I think are currently undervalued. And the last altcoin is extremely undervalued. They're highly worked on projects with good developers, as well as a huge audience. And like I said, they are extremely undervalued. Polkadot has a superior technology with decentralization, interoperability. They have Kusama as a test dummy for the whole entire ecosystem. So if something goes wrong with Kusama, it's going to get fixed with Polkadot. This is actually a strategic advantage of the Polkadot ecosystem. And then I found altcoins on Polkadot that are extremely undervalued. Guys, look, Polkadot itself has not gotten any hype at all for some reason. And like I said, superior form of technology. So we have an undervalued layer one, in my personal opinion. And then we have, again, undervalued altcoins on this layer one. Keep watching. Hey guys, before we jump into the video, I just wanted to update you really quickly. There are hundreds of people impersonating me. They have made a business model out of it. These guys are making new accounts at will. They will copy my posts. They will copy my avatar. They are going to copy and paste everything about my life to convince you that they are me. You guys know the only thing I sell is the fundamentalsecrets.com, my digital course. So if you apply there, then yes, somebody will reach out. Other than that, guys, it's a scammer. Don't let them take your money. What's going on, everybody? Alex back with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Polkadot ecosystem. Yes, I am the hardest working, highest value YouTuber on the internet. I am going to literally compare and contrast every single decentralized finance altcoin on Polkadot in front of your eyes, like literally in front of your eyes, the same way I did it with Cardano, I am gonna use fundamental analysis to compare and contrast every single variable on the Polkadot ecosystem. Nobody on YouTube is doing this, so if you appreciate the content, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with a best friend. No BS, high quality research, unbiased by the way, because no token could ever pay me. I have never accepted a sponsorship and I never will. And I'm telling you right now, I am the handsomest by far. I'm a quadrillionaire handsome dude and I look better than all of, I, maybe I don't. But let's jump into the actual topic of discussion here. I use the handsome joke pretty much every single video. This is another reason for the pump. This came out 17 hours ago. Basically on Binance, they have the dot slot auction here. So seems like another alpha leak for Binance that was proposed and noticed by members of the community on September 6th. Looks like Binance is preparing for dot auctions. If you guys have been following me, I basically break down Kusama and dot. And right now they are auctioning off parachain slots for Kusama. We know that Kusama is happening before dot. So when dot comes out with parachains, if you understand how parachains work, they're basically auctioning systems where if you want a spot on DOT, you basically have to sacrifice the most DOT, right? And this is going to pump the price of DOT. I'm telling you right now, it's undervalued. If they come out with these auctions, it's over GG for polka dot. So pay attention, guys. Really pay attention. I'm giving you the undervalued coins before they happen. This is in other news, but I thought it was really interesting. iPhone prices in ETH at their launch. The iPhone 6S was worth 690 ETH. The iPhone 7 was worth 52.17 ETH. The iPhone 8 was 2.49. Guys, it's like, it's crazy. It's, it's insane how valuable Ethereum has become. Now we know again, that Ethereum is very, 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 you know, slow and very expensive. 
So if we're investing into these other layer ones, this interoperable world that we've been talking about in multiple videos where I think, you know, it's not going to be one blockchain eats all. I think it's just going to be kind of like a layer two uh, ecosystem. And then the developers can pick the best layer one. If this becomes a reality, maybe Ethereum loses a lot of dominance and it goes into the layer ones that we talk about on this YouTube channel. It's getting crazy. We're talking about the future. We got to be ahead of the curve. Remember, I didn't get into cryptocurrency buying Bitcoin. I got into cryptocurrency buying Ethereum at three to seven dollars. And I did like a 350 X or something like that. And that's the type of gains I am in cryptocurrency for. If you're in those type of gains, leave a comment below. Let me know. Or do you want to just hold Bitcoin, maybe a Bitcoin maxi and just like, like, you know, let Bitcoin give you like 50% a year, which by the way, is still better than traditional finance. But you know, we're degens, right? We're trying to make money, right? Are you trying to make money? Leave a comment below. Let me know who's trying to really make money. If we come over to this next tweet here, Charles Hoskinson, this guy, uh, Mike Dowdus, whatever his name is, Solana down 14% after not working for a half day. Cardano valued at 76 billion after not working ever. He's throwing shots everybody's attacking each other. These layer ones are going at it. It's, it's juicy. It's juicy drama. I, I need to stay up to date with it. And then Charles Hoskinson basically comes back saying, you know, it's pretty easy to win when you're being underestimated and ignored. It's actually the greatest gift we can get. Stay hungry, everyone. I don't know if they're being underestimated. They're number three on CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap. By market cap size, they're the third biggest cryptocurrency. So I don't know what he means by that. Maybe it's because, you know, the smart contracts haven't really come out yet, which you know, I don't mean to bring it up. I'm not the guy that points fingers. Like I'm not the told you so guy, but you know, I did tell you guys that Cardano was going to dip and it did in the past seven days. But as you can see here from what we were talking about, Cardano did take a massive dip after the launch news. And actually it just got bought back up. Maybe it's because of Solana. Maybe it's because of Solana having those issues and the whole entire blockchain coming to a halt. We see this price today coming up about 5%. That's actually really good. And I'm excited for honestly my Cardano holdings to continue to flourish. Again, just to give you guys a breakdown, if Cardano comes down to around the $2 range, I'm gonna jump back in with more. I have already a good bag and I never sold it. I'm treating it as an investor. Again, just play your money smart. Don't go all in at this point. The news is out. They don't have any decentralized exchanges or smart contracts currently working right now. So again, uneventful news like we talked about. It was just basically pure hype. So pay attention to that, guys. Pay attention to what's really going on. Also, just one more tweet here before we jump into the Polkadot ecosystem. Is EIP-159 a parasitic tax on the Ethereum apps ecosystem? In effect, driving apps to other networks for the sake of short-term deflationary effects? That is a really, really interesting point to make. Is Ethereum sacrificing short-term gratification for long-term fulfillment? Is this burning mechanism that they put into EIP-1559 just simply for the fact to increase the value of Ethereum and pump Ethereum? Or is it for actual technical usage? This is a big question um, that you should ask yourself because I don't really see any benefit except for the fact that it's pumping. And then, you know, people can go on Twitter and say that it's deflationary. So again, like I said, time and time again, I run a business and this is very, very true. If you sacrifice long-term fulfillment for short-term gratification, you pretty much always lose in the long run. So be careful, uh, Ethereum. Let's see where they can go. Hopefully they come out with Ethereum 2.0, I really hope so. So if we come over here, this is kind of the best breakdown of the Polkadot ecosystem that I can find. So I'm just gonna scroll to the top here and we're gonna be going over DeFi. You guys know I love DeFi and I'm gonna be hitting the Akala Network, Bifrost and Staffy. These three right here. And we're gonna go into extreme detail. I'm gonna be going over product, tokenomics, team, marketing, um, it's not every single variable of fundamental analysis, but what I typically do is I research every coin. And then at the end, I will basically pick top three out of all of them. And I'll dive deeper into the top three to figure out what's truly undervalued. So again, of course, subscribe to the channel. I am literally the only person on the internet doing this. These guys are just picking three altcoins because somebody told them so. And because they watched another YouTube video and they're just copying the other YouTube video, but they are not comparing and contrasting all variables in front of your face. You know why? Because it's really hard to do. It takes massive amounts of concentration and I work 14 hours a day and I do not take vacations. These are the things that make a great researcher, someone that's willing to sit there and go through every variable. And I'm telling you right now, like I see it all over the long run, we will win, I promise. My army, Alex army, people below, the mustache army, we are gonna win in the long run because of this effort, this consistent effort and being able to overcome all obstacles of short-term gratification. I'm in it for the long run. Pay attention. We're really out here, okay? We're really out here. So if we look at Alcala, we're not gonna actually be researching Alcala specifically because they actually have a platform, which we'll talk about 
uh, Karura, if I pronounce that correctly. But as you can see, the website's pretty clean. They have a really nice design. And really, Akala is stable dollar. Basically, one Akala dollar equals one US dollar, and a ticker is AUSD. So what is Akala? It's an all-in-one DeFi hub of Polkadot. So basically, they're starting off with a stable coin, if that makes sense. Akala is an Ethereum-compatible platform for financial applications to use smart contracts or build protocols with out-of-box cross-chain capabilities and robust security. The platform also offers a suit of financial applications, including a trustless staking derivative, Liquid Dot, a multi-collateralized stablecoin backed by cross-chain assets, AUSD, and an automated market maker, decentralized exchange, all with micro gas fees that can be paid in any token. Very interesting, very, uh, you know, crazy way to say it's a liquidity platform with a stable coin. That's it. It's just a liquidity platform. They have a stable currency. They have staking liquidity. It's powered by Polkadot. So it's interoperable. Super, you know, crazy way to say that. That's all it is pretty much. They're going to have multiple apps. Uh, right now, they just came out with their first one. And that's the one they're really going to cover because they actually have a token that increases and decreases in value. I know people watch this for the sake of potentially investing. And that's why we're doing it. But if we quickly, quickly look at their roadmap, you can see that in 2021, they launch Karura. And then they're going to launch something else, you know, in Akala. But they're basically working in process with this other decentralized app. So it's not done. Really quickly, let me break it down a little bit more for you. They want to create a sound, stable currency for low cost, borderless value transfer for all blockchains that are connected in the network. Collaterals can be from both Polkadot and any other connected network to achieve higher supply ceiling. Really interesting. Leverage Polkadot's sharded security mechanism to have the highest security on day one, achieving true decentralization and censorship resistance through its consortium setup and token release model. They want to be a specialized stablecoin network that can have a customized fee schedule while maintaining the security. They're going to be future-proof with a forkless, non-destructive upgrade with an on-chain governance, which is like a Polkadot feature. It's not native to them. Polkadot has, uh, you know, they use Substrate and they have this feature where they can basically upgrade the protocol without forking, which is really, really cool. It serves as a building block for basically more open financial services. They're trying to be like the all-in-one decentralized hub. And their first project is Karura. If you can see, the website looks clean as well. Their branding is on point. What I've noticed with Polkadot for some reason is all of Polkadot branding is crazy. And right now they have liquid KSM staking. They have basically a pair chain on Kusama where you can stake, swap, and they have, of course, the KUSD stablecoin. So very basic stuff. I'm not going to sit here and break this down too detail because to be honest with you, like I said, very basic. Their product is not the greatest out of the three, in my personal opinion, but their marketing looks like it's probably the best by far. And they look like they have a really good team. So here's the actual application. You can mint KUSD by offering their native token KAR. Actually, their token's up like 20% in the past two days. You can get the KUSD. Right now, it's on Kusama, okay? If you guys don't know, again, I want to say it one more time. Kusama is basically the same thing as Polkadot, except for uh, they're kind of like breaking things as they go. They're, everything is being developed on Kusama first so that they can switch it with Polkadot. So they're actually working together. It's kind of like a get out of jail free card that they have with Polkadot, where this whole entire blockchain is being developed. All the same projects on Kusama are most likely going to be on Polkadot, et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. So they have the swapping, they have the liquid staking, just like any other decentralized finance application. Very basic here. You can earn. They have a high APR. It's pretty good. They have a governance model. Same decentralized application that we see anywhere on uh, Ethereum. But of course, they have the interoperability effect. They have all the benefits of Polkadot and they have, you know, the substrate and all the benefits of Polkadot. You get the point. They can upgrade the whole entire product without forking. Let's look at the tokenomics really quickly. If we see right here, we can see that 60.87% is going to the community. So the backers got 10.8%. Early backers got 18.33%. I don't like that. You know, they could drive the price down by selling the tokens. If we look at the actual community breakdown, we have most of it going to the auction reward and liquidity program, which is good. They have a reward reserve, ecosystem development and treasury reserve. They control most of that. So I will say that this is not the best distribution model I've seen in a coin before. I like open and fair launches. The developer team can get a small amount of it, but I, I would like the decentralized autonomous organization to be able to pick things like this instead of them, maybe just like a treasury. So it's not the best, but it's okay. It's pretty you know, standard. If we look at the Alcala team, we're going to be looking at Karura and Alcala, okay, both of them at the same time. 
they're pretty much world class. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into it because I'm going to be here all day. But this is, I guess he's a Polka Dot ambassador right now. It's one of the owners or the founders. He's actually the chief technical officer of Laminar. Um, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. And he's had other blockchain based projects. This is a blockchain based project and he's been a software developer for a long time. Basically, massive blockchain and computer science experience. Pretty much that's the whole story with their whole team. They have ridiculous experience and now they're working on Polkadot. So all the same thing. The thing is, they seem to be working on multiple projects, which bothers me a little bit. I will say that. You guys know, chase two rabbits, catch none. I always say this. You want to have someone that's all in. The last project in this uh, whole entire, I guess you could say top three altcoin video is going to be all in on their project. And, and you'll see the clear difference of what I'm talking about. If you look at the actual, you know, the Ocala product, it's very basic DeFi, you know, nothing new at all. When we talk about the last coin, they got in there. They got very serious about what they do. So I looked into this new project. It's basically just another project on Polkadot that all of these guys are working on as well. That's the problem. They're working on too many projects, in my personal opinion. They're trying to create basically synthetic assets with margin trading. And this is actually one of the projects we're gonna be researching and the ecosystem. So maybe I don't have to research the team when we jump into this, uh, but they're basically just trying to create uh, synthetic assets or, you know, this is basically equivalent to SNX on, um, you know, Ethereum. So that's that's pretty interesting. They're gonna, they're, you can see that they're building the DeFi blocks. Maybe it helps them, I don't know. Like I'm not a developer, but when I see people working on too many things, it bothers me. Maybe because they're working together, because they're all DeFi, uh, protocols and, and they can all work together. Maybe it's, it is kind of basically working on one thing, just trying to develop DeFi in general. If we look further, pretty much the whole team is working on different projects on Polkadot. So maybe you could say it's for one cause um, and they have massive amounts of experience. I will say that uh, for sure. And I looked into some of the other projects and they all look pretty legit. So really, really good world-class team. If we go into the actual marketing, this is where they thrive. Clearly their branding is is amazing. If we look at their actual uh, Discord, you can see they have 47,000 members. That is on the higher end when it comes to project, even more than some of the best projects on Cardano. They don't even have this many people. So that's really, really good. You can see that their Telegram has 28,000 again on the high end. Their Twitter, 112,000, super high end. Cardano's way behind when it comes to their ecosystem. I will say that because you could just tell by the followers and, and you know the development. Uh, Cardano's far behind. Uh, Karura, 66.5K followers, followed by some people that I respect. So like I said, they just look like they dominated marketing for sure, but their product is pretty basic. If we look at the coin, it went up recently, 20% yesterday. Um, so we need to see adoption of uh, Polkadot and uh, Kusama for this to be like something really serious. I don't know why everybody's going to other protocols. Like Cardano, for example, doesn't even have smart contracts yet. I think it's because it's top three. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Polkadot needs better marketing. Maybe Kusama needs better marketing, whatever the case is. But it looks like they're just further developed than some of these other smart contract platforms and they're not getting the love. I think Kusama right now is like literally, if we go to CoinGecko, Kusama is number 50. It doesn't make sense to me. It should be way higher than that. Ooh, they only have, uh, what, 3.7 billion? Kusama could easily like three to four X from here. Their project is very good. Gavin Wood is a Ethereum developer. I, I don't know. Cardano is just way better at marketing, I guess. But yeah, very interesting from that side. If we look at Bifrost, which is the next product on the market, this is where it gets a little interesting. They got something different here. So basically they make the case that there's two underlying, I guess you could say DeFi or whatever you want to call it. There's two different uh, ways to earn passive income in crypto. One is through staking through a consensus model uh, or consensus mechanism. If you guys don't know what that is, it's basically a way to validate the blockchain, to come to confirmations on the blockchain. So you have staking through the native token, and then you have decentralized finance yield. And these are two ways to develop passive income. They claim that they can bring them both together in one. So you could literally have the staking benefit as well as using the same money to have decentralized yield, decentralized finance yield. That is huge. That is really, really, really big. Let me just kind of read it here. Well, you can see the picture that this is where it is right now. 
but they're putting this Bifrost uh, pair chain here in the middle to make it happen, right? Uh, users only need to hold the V token and they can obtain staking rewards. By providing V token liquidity, the proof of state network liquidity and security can both be fulfilled so that to solve the conflicts between proof of state network liquidity and security, and they will receive a share of transaction fees and liquidity incentives. That is a big time uh, hair on fire problem solution. If you don't know what a hair on fire problem is, Basically, I don't really invest in projects unless they have something that's like 10 times better than what's currently being proposed. So if you had your hair on fire and somebody offered you a bucket of water, what are the chances you're going to buy this water? You're going to probably spend your whole entire everything on this water. You're going to spend your whole net worth to make sure that your hair doesn't, you know, <laughs> or you don't die from, you know, these flames, right? And if I had the options to be able to stake and get yield at the same time, it's a no brainer for me. That would be in the same situation. I will buy or whatever they have to sell without even hesitating. This is what you call a hair on fire problem solution. So they look like they have something good. And again, just looking at another visual representation of what's going on here, you have the staking from Polkadot um, and then you can actually get incentives from different decentralized applications. And they're claiming, as you can see here, that you can get it on EOS and Ethereum. So the interoperability is also playing a big role because they can get the liquidity from Ethereum. Big, big, big moves here. We're talking about the future. Seriously, guys, pay attention to what's going on. If we look at the roadmap, it's kind of bad. I will be honest. They need to update this for sure. But in 2021, I mean, I don't even know if this went through or not. They need to update this on their website for sure. I can't go further. They don't even have a quarter three action plan here. So big problems there for me but it's just a website. Uh, they can definitely fix that in the future. And then if we look at their product a little bit deeper, they actually have crossover bridge. Uh, so they actually have something that works, generic asset cross-chain functionality. Um, so their developer team is clearly taking action. Their product is not bad at all. If we look at the token allocation, they're very specific, which I like. And you can see that only about 50% is going to the ecosystem. You guys know I don't like that. You know, I like to have a little bit more. 50% is like the threshold. It's like the minimum amount for me. I like to see at least 50% plus uh, going to the ecosystem and going to the public. And as you can see, they're doing basically the same thing as everybody else. Uh, and then they have this treasury, mint drop, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is not the best. Uh, I'd rather see something a little bit more aggressive to the community, but it is what it is. That's very basic in cryptocurrency. If we look at the actual team, they look like they chose to be anonymous for whatever reason. Uh, we see that a lot in DeFi because we are, you know, the regulations uncertain right now. It's very, very uncertain. We don't know if DeFi is going to be regulated out of existence. So this just makes sense. It doesn't mean they're going to rug pull or anything like that. It just means that they don't want to be known. And then just really quickly, uh, when it comes to the team, you can see they partner with a lot of different companies. I didn't look into the actual credibility of some of these, but like dig digital renaissance is uh, credible. It just looks like in general, they have the basic like partnerships. You guys get the deal. So if we look into the actual marketing, they're pretty good as well. It looks like, like I said, guys, look at these Polkadot decentralized finance applications. Like and then compare them to Cardano. Like Cardano is significantly smaller for some reason when it comes to ecosystem development. I don't know why. Uh, if we look at Bifrost, um, they have 60,000 members. I told you guys that's on the high end. We look at their actual Discord, 16,894. And we look at their actual Twitter, 69,000.4K. And it's not that I don't know how. So basically the reason why Cardano doesn't have as much ecosystem development is because it's hard for developers to go over to this new extended UTXO model. People are just used to, you know, being able to come from Ethereum, right? And Polkadot seems to obviously have that ease of use for developers. So for the final product, we're going to be talking about a coin called Staffy or FIS. And it's funny because my team has been talking about this for a long time in the fundamental secrets from back in the day. I'm talking about months ago, um, they were talking about Staffy. Um, if we come over here, basically it's a staking derivatives of stake assets. So we have another hair on fire problem being solved. Staffy or short for staking finance is the first DeFi protocol unlocking liquidity of staked assets. So basically they're kind of doing something similar to Bifrost, but what they're doing is you could stake your assets, but then also use it in any way. It's opening up the liquidity ecosystem. They right now have our bridge or a Staffy ERC20 bridge. Like I'm telling you right now, whoever is working on this, and we're going to go over the team a little bit, they are all all in on this project and you can clearly see instead of waiting for like a parachain on dot polka dot or something like that they have jumped on like binance smart chain they've jumped on uh, you know ethereum they are clearly active it looks like their team in my personal opinion is the best and most active and willing to die for this they're willing to stay with their one project and you can clearly see from the development if we look at the r token paper the data from staking rewards show that there's 151 staking projects 
in which a total worth of 15 billion USD of assets are staked now. In fact, there are actually far more than 157 projects that have adopted the uh, proof of stake consensus mechanism and a total worth of staked assets easily exceeds 40 billion USD if you include these converted from uh, Ethereum 2.0 to proof of stake. Therefore, as proof of stake grows, the task of helping validators unleash the liquidity of staking assets while ensuring the security of the original chain remains. The R token solution proposed by Staffy is a solution to above problem. With R tokens, billions of dollars of staked assets can circulate without the need to unstake. It solves the liquidity dilemma of staking and increases the willingness of both crypto enthusiasts and blockchain developers to participate in the proof of stake consensus. So basically, you could stake and also withdraw your stake and provided as liquidity to different places, kind of like DeFi that we saw for Bifrost. So very interesting. If we look, they actually have a legitimate working bridge, ERC-20 bridge, and a BEP or Binance Smart Chain bridge. They are actively working. The, the actual interface doesn't look as good as the others, but their product is superior. And this is what I really look for all the time. I look for like superior products with like underutilized marketing. And from there, you know, if the marketing comes into play or people just catch on that the project's uh, superior in product, then it's going to go crazy. And you can see they have their liquidity token for ETH, BNB, FIS, DOT, KSM, Atom, and Matic. So they are clearly, clearly active and probably the best product. If we come over here, they also have a validator grant. They have Staffy Warriors. So they even claimed in one of their articles when I was reading that they let the, only the Staffy Warriors do the marketing. And all they did was work on the product. So that's really good. And they have staking drops. Very interesting. If we come over here, you can see that they have multiple security audit reports. One on our ETH, one on our FIS, one on the R bridge and the relay audit report, as well as the Safi chain bridge report. Security top notch. I like it. Um, I didn't really look into it super deep because you could just tell. And this is a legitimate project. I've you know, I've heard of it from multiple people that are credible in the space. But you can see that they're actually continuing to integrate. If we look at their blog, they're continuously updating on a consistent basis. The developers are just telling everybody what they're doing. And it's very, very fast. Like I'm talking about up until yesterday, like literally every two or three days, they're coming out with new improvements. For every new quarter in the future, the development of the new R tokens will be significant development work. They have new integration. Staffy will create new user scenarios for the R token, basically developing more yield. Liquidity will keep increasing to support new integrations into the future. A new R token app. They're actually gonna come out with a new app which what we just talked about. The R token app is a tool that facilitates the R token asset management for both stakers and validators. At the current stage, the UI UX is not as per our expectations, neither are mine. So they're going to get that better. They have new explorations. The mint amount of R token will gradually increase, which poses both opportunities and challenges for the protocol. In general, they are not stopping. It looks like their product is really, really, really good. Uh, if we look at the actual tokenomics i wish it's better i wish they you know some people weren't as greedy but you can see the community only gets about 40 percent uh foundation gets 21.4 which they control the team gets 15 advisor six percent they lack in this area hopefully in the future you know more projects adopt you know the the fair launch where you have to stake to get you know get paid and stuff like that if we look at the actual team they don't really have linkedin accounts too much so we could just read off of their website I did find the founder on LinkedIn. He has ridiculous experience. He actually even worked for Alibaba as well, co-founder of other projects. He has a ridiculous amount of experience, or as you can see here, eight years. He has experience in product management and development, has been involved in staking business since its early days, and also wrote, wrote a book about proof of stake named Mastering Proof of Stake. He's also the founder of Wetez Mining Pool and Wetez Wallet, managing a few dozen assets. So he has ridiculous blockchain experience as well as regular experience. And you can clearly see what their product. Tor is a software engineer coming from Alibaba. So you can see that he got some Alibaba teammates to come and help him out in general. But their team, like these guys work. They just work and they're only on one thing. And I like that a lot. So team is really, really good. If we look at the actual marketing, you can see the website is pretty on point. I will say branding could be a lot better. This is where they lack, but it's not that bad. It's not, it's not like a scam. You can see they only got 26.7K followers on Twitter. So you can clearly, again, like I see, they're under marketed right now. They need more marketing, but their product is really, really good. They're dominating all the other ones we just talked about when it comes to product. And once they get marketed for whatever reason, uh, it's going to get crazy. They just launched on Binance Smart Chain. They're continuing to improve on the product side with less marketing. Like I said, look, September 14th, September 15th, they are 
updating everyone pretty much almost on a day-to-day -day basis on their product and how they're developing. They only have 2,000 members. Staffy looks undervalued, guys. I'm gonna be honest with you. And on their Telegram, they only have 15,000 members, which is like the best, but it could be better than that. But yeah, in general, guys, like, like I said, um, Staffy looks like the undervalued one. I'm not gonna, you can't really tell which one's better or which one's worse or which one's gonna be better in the future until you compare every single product in the Polkadot ecosystem. Guys, I'm gonna try as hard as I can. I mean, look how many projects there are. There's a lot of projects. I'm gonna stick to DeFi for now because if I went into everything, it would be absolutely crazy. So we're gonna stick to DeFi so we can double down on one thing. Remember, we don't wanna chase two rabbits and catch none, right? We wanna make sure we're correct and get DeFi correct. I think decentralized finance is the future regardless of regulation or not. I think it's gonna be very hard to stop decentralized finance as a world thing. Maybe in the United States, they regulate it, but in general, it's gonna be very hard to stop. So we're diving into the Polkadot ecosystem and let's look at Polkadot's price right now just to see uh, what it's been doing in the past couple of days. I still think it's extremely undervalued. Uh, we did a, the last video, I looked at AVAX versus Polkadot when it comes to website visits and ADAX has so much more website visits for some reason. The price is currently sitting at about 36.24. So it's not even at its all time high. And this is like really, really big. If they start coming out with parachain slots on Polkadot, it's over, GG's. Uh, Kusama right now is still undervalued as well. This ecosystem is gonna be fun to explore, but we're also gonna be going into the Phantom ecosystem. So guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel, of course. That's it for this video. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism, subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this, guys. Catch you in the next one.